That was pretty badass, right? So, someone sent me a request on uh, how do I code uh, hyper tag team supers just like what you just saw with Luffy and Ace. Now, the simplest way to explain it would be to show you what happens in slow motion, which I cannot really do, but I'll pause it and you get the idea. And from there, you'll I'll break it down on how it's done. So first, let's start off with the uh, basic uh, startup state. This is Ace just extending his hands out. Like a regular move, right? Now, if Ace hits him, he enters a custom state where he's stuck in his 5000 um, state, which is his, uh, his first uh, hurt state in the common one, which is on every character. Then I have two X-Plots and some BGM playing in the background. So each x is going to come in from the side and get stuck in a position. Now this is just an animation of the image moving uh, like say 50, 50, 50, 50 pixels each time and when it gets closer here it moves by tens. What so it looks like it slows down. And I have a voice clip playing for each of them just to make it look more cool. Then I have a white flash. The white flash is just to uh, get rid of everything. So, you know, so you, your eyes don't see the background change or anything. It just sees a white flash. And then next thing you know, boom, super background's here. And then you see the characters. Um, player 2 is in the uh, dizzy state now, and Ace is just standing there. Because Ace is also in his um, what if I hit them animation. Player 2 is in the oh I'm dizzy animation, which is also in the custom state. And Luffy is a helper. Now, uh, the best way to do it is have the helper jump in or run in, whatever you think is best. So Luffy jumps in. He goes to a second state where he lands. Does his attack uh, animation, which also includes his little taunt there. So he attacks. Hits player two. Player two slides using the uh, ground velocity. Then Ace gets ready and attacks. Knocks him up in the air. Now, when you do custom states, you have to um, take precaution on how uh, player two is handled and make sure player two goes back to their normal states. Otherwise, they'll be stuck in a custom state forever and they will not be able to attack you afterwards. I've done this a couple times and it's it, trial and error gets it uh, out of the way. So Luffy punches him, Ace knocks him up. Then Luffy does his little thing with a slight velocity to put him below player two. Then Luffy changes to another state, which sends him upwards. <laughs> And then Ace, while still playing the single animation, Ace is all one animation. He's not two, he's one animation that has a lot of timing in it. So Luffy puts him up and Ace just unleashes him. And Luffy finishes, Luffy lands, and then runs away. Ha ha! And then Ace is like, la 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 la. So, pretty simple breakdown, right? Now let's go to the actual uh, coding of all of it. Just like you would for a striker, which you can see in my other tutorial, you'll need all the sprites of the character. Okay, so this is Luffy's attack on the ground. This is his uh, spinning into the air, uh, air uh, uh, Gatling storm and falling back down. This is a little dust effect. I don't know if I added this to him. I don't think I did. Then this is his jump. So he jumps on screen and dash to go away, taunt. So you see just a couple animations, like simply as uh, jumping in, uh, dashing away, taunting, and then the actual attacks can make it look so awesome. Then, just for the hell of it, I have the uh, portraits, just to make it look more cool. So I have uh, Luffy, One Piece, and Whitebeard. Each of them, obviously, for the, uh, for the team supers. See, Whitebeard comes in with the jump, lands, stands for a quick second, then goes into the attack, then runs away. Simple. Then he's effects. Now, that's that. Now for the animations. Uh, let's see. Mm, Super 1, now. So, okay, strikers. This is going to be the initial startup state for, uh, for Ace. This is what makes him attack. See, so that's all he's doing. During this time, if player 2 is hit by this red box right there, they're going to enter the custom state. So that's, this is all Ace's first animation. If this misses, it misses. That's it. Super's done. If he does hit, this portrait's going to play, which you see Luffy coming in by uh, 200 and 175, which is 25 down. 150, 25 down, 125, 25 down, 25 down. It's all 25s until you get to the end, which is just 5s. So it looks like that, see? And then the last one is negative 1 time, so it's infinite, this last frame. And because it's an X-plot, I can set the remove time myself. And then there's Ace. 
Yearl. Then back to one Whitebeard, Yearl. Now, for Ace, this is going to be his combo. Because the first hit has that slowdown, and it looks like an epic pause where he hits player two, the first frame is going to be the last frame that he has, which is the attack frame. And it's going to be uh, 80 ticks, just because I think that's the best time to use. You don't need this red hitbox here. I just left it there because I copied and pasted it. After that, when the screen flashes white, Ace goes into a stand frame. So all of this, this whole image here, is held for 80 seconds. During this 80 seconds, the portraits are uh, sliding on screen, and the screen is going to flash white. And then after the screen flashes white, he's going to be in his stand. He'll start doing this. Then he'll get ready for the attack. Then he'll get his gun ready and start shooting. And then that's it. So this is all in ace. And now, uh, this is just effects that I have for him to use. And bullets and Luffy. Okay, so this is Luffy. Luffy, because he's a helper, he must have multiple uh, states for this to work. And the easiest way to make this work is to treat him as a character. When you align his sprites, treat him as a character. So he's aligned just like a character. And all of his um, velocities and stuff, base them off of your original character. I'm assuming they're going to be from the same universe. Like, you know, this is the One Piece universe. Ace, Luffy, they're brothers. So I... I uh, gave them the same velocities for jumping and stuff. So this is like uh, your regular uh, 40 uh, animation 41 jump, you know, going up. That's a basic regular 41 jump. So that's what I'm going to use for Luffy to jump in, and then he lands. Because he's a helper and he's not really there to play as a character, he's just going to have his land and attack all in one. So he lands, he does his taunt, then he starts attacking. He winds up, and that's it. Because he starts going up for the second attack, that's why I ended off here. I could have done it all in one animation, but I like to make it separate sometimes because it just works easier. So as you see, he jumps in, he lands and attacks, and then when he jumps forward and spins around, he goes into the air with this. And after what looks like one, two, three, after three spins, he spins around and goes to his air falling. Now this would be like a physics um, A for air to send him back down to the ground, or you can use a gravity code, or um, you know various other uh, ways like state type set. But basically he goes up with this, then spins around and comes down with that. And then his land, which is going to be the same thing as his, um, like his other land. He lands, then he just dashes off. So it's all set into one. So now, see, Luffy is just four animations. Jumping into battle, landing and attacking, going into the air and attacking, and falling, landing and escaping. So four sets of animations for Luffy. Now for the code. Now scroll down. Yeah, Luffy Super. Okay. Now, this is more or less a straightforward Super with nothing fancy about it, right? you got the after image, you got the Super Pause, you've got the, the play sound, the change state, and a regular state def. The only thing to know is, I, I made this uh, in un unblockable. If you take out the hit flag and guard flag, you make the move unblockable. Um, now... Now the way this works is basically I have a hit def which works on um, time equals zero being any second that player two hits Ace's red box, no matter which frame it is, if it hits the red box, he's gonna go into custom state three fifty. Player one, if he hits, is gonna go into custom state three ten. So by this hit def hitting and actually working, both players are sent into custom states. Now we'll start off with um uh, custom state for me, for Ace. When Ace hits with the first initial hit, he's going to this state right away. Like this is thrown out of this is like thrown out the window. Once this hit that hits, this is happening right away. That's why I had the animation um, hold off for 80 ticks because it needs to compensate for that time that's um, that's like that's like uh, lost or gained rather. So he's in the custom state now. This is a player once custom state ace. He has no physics because he end for no physics because I want to have total control of his velocities and what he does. Wait a second. Huh? Oh wow, I think I did this wrong. Huh. Move type H. No, that should be A. Yeah, that shouldn't be like that for me. Anyways, um type equals S because he's standing. Move type equals A because it's an attack. Physics none because I have one control of him. Control None, because you don't want the player to take control during the custom um, super move. Animation, sprite priority, okay. 
Now I separated all of it using uh, this little thing here, and I have the ending of it right here. So all of this here is just cosmetics. Now see, assert special. Assert special can grant you various things. Let me open up here for you, and you'll see. Assert special has uh, certain flags. You're allowed three flags only per assert special. So if you have more to use, you have to make another assert special. So out of the three you can use, you have intro, which means your character is playing an intro and that the game is going to wait until the intro is finished before it skips to the, um, before it continues on to the fight screen. This is only used for intros, nothing else. Invisible. Your character will be, uh, their sprites will be disabled and you can still do everything. They'll just be disabled. Round not over, meaning, obviously what it says, the round is not over, then this can you know, take place. No bar display. Not no bar display. No bar display. This disables the life bars. No background disables the backgrounds. No foreground disable the foregrounds. No stand guard, crouch guard, air guard, auto turn. All this is related to the... Um, you know, the uh, opponent or yourself. Uh, no KO slow. We're meaning when you kill someone, they kind of slow down. This will disable that. No shadows, disable the shadows. This is very helpful for helpers, as you don't want your helpers to have shadows sometimes, especially if your helper is a projectile. So you're going to need, like, flag equals no shadow for a helper that's a projectile. Global no shadow, which affects everything. Player one, player two, and I believe the helpers as well. It'll just have no shadows. No music, which is very important. You don't want music to play if you're having uh, something like what I have with custom music. No walk, meaning that if you're running, no walk will stop you from um, slowing down and going to your walk state. And it just prevent, it just uh, disables walk in general. But no one really uses that. Not for anything I know of. Um, timer freeze, stop the time obviously. Unguardable, makes the move unguardable. So all this can come in handy for various reasons. Now, what I used is no bar display to not display life bars, no foreground to display anything in the front of me, and no uh, global shadow. So it disables everybody's shadows. So no one's shadow is shown, not even the helpers. Next is a not hit by. During the time, one tick, which lasts for um, always, uh, Ace is not going to be hit by standing, crouch, or air attacks. Norm normal attack, super attack, hyper attack. Normal projectile, super projectile, hyper projectile. Normal throw, super throw, hyper throw. He will not be hit by anything. No matter where they're coming from, he will not be hit by it. And ignore hit pause equals one. Just make sure this stays active. If, you know, when the player hits him, uh, there's a slight glitch where it deactivates for a quick split second, but during that time it can cause errors, so it's important to have ignore hit pause. Next, uh, because you know I have three flags here, I have to use another assert special. So time greater than zero, which is also the same thing as uh, trigger equals one. I don't know why I did that, but it's the same thing more or less. One equals, you know, same thing as time greater than zero. No music. Reason why? I'm playing my own music. Screen bound. Um... <clears throat> I gotta put this a one there. Uh, screen bound works as the trigger. When is it gonna be active? This is only active for one tick. Screen bound is active for one tick and only one tick. And because I use one, it's gonna be active completely throughout this entire move. If I want to be more precise, I can use something like time greater than um, zero and time less than ten. Yeah. So this way, for the first ten ticks, well, not really. Mm, greater than or equal to zero, yeah. And greater less than or equal to ten. Okay, so for the first ten ticks from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, the character is going to be bound to the screen, and they cannot fall off the edges or anything or disappear. They'll be forced to stay within the frame of the window. Uh, the value decides if they're allowed to go in and out. Um, one means they are screen bound; they're stuck inside the box. Zero means no, they can fall outside the box. Move camera means if you want the camera to move and follow their action. Zero means no, one means yes. It's a boolean, which is true or false. So can the camera move left and right? Zero, no. Can the camera move up and down? Zero, no. Uh, ignore hit that, uh, hit pause. Very important because, as I said, there's a slight glitch where um, any trigger with uh, one or time greater than zero, which is always activated, 
hit defs and hit pauses may cause a little corruption to these. That's why you have to use ignore hit pause to ignore that altogether, and this will always be active this way. Play sound. This is music. I Because it's the background music that I have, I decided to assign it a channel. You're allowed up to 12 channels by default. You can't change that more in your Moogan configuration file. But then you don't want to change it in your file. They make a character play a sound on like channel uh, like 17, and then no one else has that channel. So then the sound wouldn't play on someone else. So I recommend using either a, a number between 1 to 4, channel negative 1, or channel 0. However, channel 0 is very important. I'll tell you why in a second. So, play sound is going to play sound 15, comma 0, volume scale. This is the volume code for Mugen 1.0. In Mugen, uh, when Mugen, it's just volume equals. But this is not, so we use volume scale, 100. 100 is normal volume. 200, twice as loud. 300, three times as loud. 50, you know, quiet. And it's going to have to activate on time equals 15, on channel 5, out of uh, 12. And this is the... Oh, this is sound five. Yeah. So yeah, that's just a little background music I played. Then five and six and five and eight, uh, fifteen, six and fifteen, uh, five are gonna play at time ten and time forty. Fifteen, six and five. Let's see what those are. Fifteen, five. Fifteen, six. Good. Then this is obviously Luffy and Ace's voices. So first the BGM activates, then the uh, characters. You can put this whatever order you want to. It really doesn't matter. But you just have to have your triggers to work in a way that it looks and plays properly. Then you have the two X-plot codes, which are the portraits. Now, I don't even think I needed this here. I just put this here because it's a habit nowadays. Both of them will trigger at the same time, so they both cross over and um, play the animation, give them the same idea as what their animation is. That's what I do, it's my personal preference. Their position, and you'll trial and error the position to get it right. Pause type is deprecated in Mugen 1.1, it says, but in 1.0 and Wind Mugen is very, very useful and effective in so many ways. I don't know why they would get rid of this, because if they get rid of this, then exploits can only be done on player 2 if they're in a custom state, which is a no-no, because that's a problem. So I used the pause type for this uh, for the super portrait, and uh, you know that's that uh, bind time equals negative one, meaning the portrait is bound to the screen. So no matter where you go, if you somehow break out of the custom state and move around, the portrait's still going to be in the correct spot. He won't just like slide off screen or anything. Now because the portraits have a negative one uh, frame of animation for the last frame, this they'll infinitely be here. So watch, I'll play this. See, it's on the last frame, negative time, it's infinitely being played. To fix that, you use the remove time. You have to trial and error the remove time until it looks right. 65 works in my case, so I'm using that. And all this is um, other uh, uh, exploit stuff you should probably know. All PAL effects. This is the white flash that I use to flash it all to make it all disappear. So after 75 ticks, and all this has happened before that 75 ticks, it's going to flash white. I I, uh, I kind of guessed the colors on this one actually, so it's gonna flash white, and this is gonna last more or less for 20 ticks. The flash is gonna last 20 ticks. So 75 plus 20 is uh, the 95. So basically, you have from 75 ticks to 95 ticks to do anything like uh, positioning or exploits or something. So that's what I did. So during this time. Um, that it, it's all it's all white. It's turning white for 20 ticks. 10 ticks after it, it takes effect. Player one is being positioned here, negative uh, 100 from the center. Pause set is uh, relative to the screen position. So let me just start this up. I'll show you a quick second what I mean. Okay. So pause set will be relative to this. This here is zero. This line in the middle. This is zero. No matter what, negative 100 is going to be on the left side because these are all negative numbers. Think of a number line. Positive 100 would be on the right side, right here. So I have it saying if Luffy is face, uh, sorry, if Ace is facing right hand, which he is right now, he's going to move back 100 pixels, right here. If he's facing left, like this guy, he's going to move back 100 pixels, right here. So based on his facing, we'll decide which position he's going to be, left or right. And that happens at 85 ticks. This is 80 at 80 ticks. This is the super background. 
Um, I have it set to a scale that I've never tried before, but it works. Uh, game height divided by the local chord, and game width divided by the local chord. And this will more or less scale it to fit the screen regardless of what resolution the, um, the other person has that they're playing and using. Everything else is more or less the same standard stuff. Now that was all just a startup, and I'll show you. All of that takes place during this time. See, so all of that was more or less every, all those codes up there. I have music here. Cool. Next is the Luffy summoning code. Um, and keep in mind, Ace is one animation, <clears throat> so he's still playing it. So let me see if I can find his animation. Okay, so see the ticks? Because the first is 80, everything else is thrown up like much higher. So, okay, there. So 227 ticks later, it's when he's attacking. But you can also use animation element. So you have the frames and everything, just like that. Projectiles. It's all one animation, so it's all based on triggers and animation elements and all that at this point. The hard part was getting everything ready to start up. That's that's player one. Now we'll go to player two. Okay, that's the helper. I don't need to explain how the helper works. The helper works the same way basically. He has a not hit by code, meaning no one can hit the helper. This one may cause errors or clones, so no one's gonna hit him. Gravity's gonna bring him back to the ground. When he hits the ground, he's gonna change state <clears throat> to the landing state and attacking state. Here, he's still not going to be hit by. You have to put the not hit by code in every state that you want the character not to be hit by. Anything. Then a pause set on Y only. Only Y to set him on the ground level. Uh, play a sound. Play another sound. Add a position. This is a fake hit. Uh, I make it look like it's a hit, but it's really not. He doesn't hit him the first time. In fact, it just plays the hit sounds and plays the hit spark as an X blood and shake the screen a little bit to make it look like a hit. But if you honestly look at this, he doesn't hit player, um, player. Wait till the music stops. So look. It looks like he hits him, but he really doesn't. He's just playing an animation with an x blood on top to make it look like he hits him. And then, I'm making player 2 slide over. Oh, the uppercut, that's a real hit death. So that's that. The fake hit. This is Luffy again, still sl jumping forward, spinning, and this is him going to the air. When the animation's over, he'll go to the air one, which will send him straight up, not hit by again. Gravity, and a hit death for multiple hits. Um, X blood. I think I. Huh, what is this for? Oh, yeah, these are. Because the way it works, you can't make hit sparks randomly appear anywhere you want them to properly. So, I use the illusion of uh, X blood. Hold on. I use the illusion of an exploit on random positions. As you see here, this is an exploit code that activates when time is greater than 5 and time uh, mod 2 equals 1 and time less than 30. So when the time is greater than 5 and less than 30, every 2 hits is going to show this exploit at what position? Um, 5 forward, a negative 100 up, random. Random will be fit either anywhere from um, anywhere from 55 to negative 45, and this will be anywhere from negative uh, 90 to negative 110. So random more or less adds to these values up and down, left and right, and it just makes it more randomized. The bind time will be one because it's a hit spark, so you don't want it to stick it and start floating around crazy. So real hit. Now more real hit. You see the hit sparks are just like randomly generated x -plots. And these are real x -plots. I mean these are real hit uh, hit sparks here because these are real attacks. So then Luffy lands. He he's not hit by still. You, he's not going to be hit by anything. Set back to the ground. Runs off. Kills himself off screen. It's simple, right? Now player 2. Once player 2 is hit by the initial startup state by player 1, they're going to enter their custom state. This is player 2's custom state. Physics N because I want to control player 2. Move type H because it's a hurt move. Player 2 is hurt. The computer cannot take effect. If move type is not equal to H, player 2 is going to automatically break out of your custom state. Like right away. And since this is the initial hit, 
um, after the move is done, during those 80 ticks where the portraits are going and everything's flashing and all that, player 2 is going to move back very slowly, so it looks like, Ooh, like a slow motion punch move. They're not going to be able to be hit by anything else, so another player in a 2 on 2 match will not be able to save them or stop them. They're, they're screwed. And um, the change to animation is to change them to animation 5000. Um, I was told by Alexei to use 5000 as best because then it lets uh, Mugen decide what to do with them as an engine. And also self state, which puts player 2 back into their own state, uh, is best to use 5000 because then Mugen will decide what to do with them if they're falling. It'll you know change them to the proper state to make them fall properly or you know whatever. So by having him in 5000, it's automatically him being hit in the face, sliding backwards. And the plus set here is at 80 ticks, which if you remember with um, Ace, the plus set for him, which was the same, they, uh, where did it go? Oh yeah, plus set. So his is at 85 ticks, but player 2's is at 80 ticks. This is not a problem at all. This is okay because remember, I'm giving the leeway of um, from 75 ticks to 95 ticks. I'm giving the whole 20 seconds to really mess around with this. So based on how player uh, player two is facing, besides on what position they're going to be in, and that's after that's done, it's going to change the actual attack. Now, um, so this is player one getting hit slowly, sliding backwards. Changing into the hurt state, hurt animation, just so it looks like they're hurt. And then after 80 ticks, when the screen flashes white, they're going to be positioned at a certain, sp a certain spot. Now, um, because I want the player to be dizzy, because they, they'll change over early, right? Remember, at 95 ticks, the screen is going to uh, stop flashing white. It's going to fade in from white. At that point, 95 ticks, player 2 has to already be in their dizzy state. So I use time 80, which is 15 before and to make player 2 go into their own dizzy state use change animation SX Victor told me how to do this I used animation 2 and it didn't work because they would play aces animation and not everyone has aces number of animations so it's best to use change animation 5300 this is a Mugen uh, required sprite animation sort of but 5300 is dizzy sprite for everybody change animation um, this is for when he is hit by Luffy, the fake hit. He's changed to 5011, which is the character being hit in the stomach, like medium hit, I believe. And then he's going to turn around at 134 and slide backwards to um, Ace. So basically, that hill, the whole hit you saw was totally fake, and, and nothing really happened. L Luffy just put his hand forward, and the x plot appeared like a hit spark, and Ace and, and uh, Player 2 turned around, pretended to get hit in the stomach, and slid backwards. All the while, wait, what? Oh yeah, okay. All the while, uh, between time zero and time less than 140, the player, the player two is not being hit by anything. So after time uh, is uh, 140 and up, then the player can be hit, which all happens right here. From the time it takes him to slide to player one, he's already he's able to be hit now. So that's all it is. After that, the hit deaths take place and the hit deaths control player two. So, I know it's kind of confusing, but uh, let me see if I can recap it. Um, player 1 does initial state. If player 1 hits player 2, player 2 goes to custom state, and player 1 goes to custom state. If player 1 misses the initial state, nothing happens. Once in the custom state, uh, uh, player 1's custom state will summon... Well, player 1's custom state will show some effects to make it look fancy, with sliding portraits and everything, and a BGM playing. And then... Player 1's custom is going to summon a helper, which will fake hit Player 2 into Player 1. And Player 1 will retaliate with an actual hit death, knocking Player 2 into the air, freeing him from the custom state, and making him just a regular target again. Player 2's custom state is going to make him pretend to be hit by a move that's not really hitting him, slide him into Player 2, and he just gets hammered after that then the helper will drop to the ground and run away. And uh, that's, that's more or less how you do a, a super uh, striker assist helper type character. It's, it's all the same thing as a regular assist character. It's just, you know, other super effects and not hit buys and stuff like that. It's just, it's effects. You know. Um, thanks for watching.
I have a special tutorial to do about flying codes. I've never done a flying code before, so I'll, I'm going to learn how. Now, now I am at least. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching. Uh, the guy who requested the video, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hmm. Well, anyways, I'm off. If you're wondering, this music is from uh, Chrono Trigger, from a group named um, what, what are they called? They're called no, no, no. Phoenix Project. They're basically remaking the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. Oh yeah, this is epic. Yep, just making some music. Oh, depending on my time and everything, I may turn these into a series of stages. You look nice. Yeah. Yeah, series of stages. These are my work files. Crap. I gotta make these life bars eventually. Some stuff I drew. Yeah, I draw. He is a baby! Ooh!